All right, howdy folks. Welcome back to Top Comics Pressing. Uh, in this video, what we're gonna do is look at this uh, not so incredible copy of The Incredible Hulk number 181. Uh, this one has been previously graded by CGC as an 8.5 uh, with a unfortunate restored grade, including a small amount of color touch. Now, I was able to clean and press this book on the first time around and I thought I saw some color touch up here and I kind of alerted the client to it and uh, we decided to send it to CGC at that time, hoping I was uh, mistaken or, or wasn't quite accurate in what I was seeing. Uh, it did indeed come back with the purple label. So since then, the client was awesome enough to send it back here. And what I thought we would do is take a peek at it under the microscope. The CGC notes did uh, mention this color touch, but they also mentioned some color touch up over in this area. And so we're going to take a peek at both those areas here under the microscope, if I can get them. Uh, nice and smoothed out and just so I don't knock the camera here we're going to go in this way on the side here somebody had asked me if it was possible to um, see color touch through a slab and I think it actually is with this microscope so right about there is our top corner and we're going to see if we can go ahead and focus in on that area and up here it was really small I actually only noticed it because it was bleed through um, but I think right in here is where you can start to see that um, right in where this crease should be. All of a sudden it's black right in that area. So if you look, you know, the very, very slight corner crease um, starting there, you can watch those white veins. And when you get to the black area, all of a sudden it is uh, filled in. So I think that that's the color touch. And if I remember right, I saw a second um, very, very small dot up here. If I can find that. Well, maybe, maybe it came through as two dots and it's actually just a little bit broad over there, but you can see the, the fibers as well, or maybe it's right up there. Maybe I don't remember quite right, but this is definitely the patch of color touch right here. You can see the white vein going through and then all of a sudden right here, it's filled in black as you get close to the edge there. So that's our color touch in the top corner. Uh, if we flip this around now and look at the other side of the book, this is color touch I had originally missed. Um, and we'll see if we can go all the way up to the top corner here. So right there is the top spine of the book. And right in here, I think is where the first touch of color is. So right, right there, you can see it, um, coming on in, uh, right here. Uh, so I think that that's our first little itty bitty patch of color touch. Um, and that is, for the record, right on top of the yellow box that says Incredible Hulk in the top corner. Um, and we can see right there is the eye to Incredible. And if I zoom back out here, we'll be able to see the, uh, the pen right through here um, should show up. So we can see that, you know, kind of right in there, that, that um, seven. And then the, the date kind of penned right across the Hulk. So if I hold this on up here... We are right in this area of the book, and that first little dab of color touch is gonna be right here, uh, right where that kind of black tease uh, on the edge there. So again, right there's our eye, and right there is the T in that red, and we can kind of see that little itty bitty peat of color touch right there. Focus it, yeah, right there so you can see it. Um, and then if we just kind of go down the spine, we can see that there's a very another little bit right there. So you can see the white on both sides of this black. So that's a white part of a crease. That's a white part of a crease. And somebody has painted right through that vein. And you want to make sure when doing this that you're not looking for ink. That's just missed out of place because this splotch right here, I think if I didn't have the microscope, I might think would be the color touch. But with the microscope, that to me looks uh, kind of identical to the background area around it. And I don't think that that actually is color touch. Uh, and if we just keep going down the spine here, and I'm going to have to keep refocusing as the slab gently shifts. Uh, I was able to find a little bit more in the area. So right there, you can kind of see how those are definitely just little micro creases that go through the black. Go back to where we were, right about there. And so now if you're paying attention, uh, this white area here is the 25 cent box. And then this line is where the bottom of the 25 cent box meets the red on the book. 
haven't figured out how to get the microscope to be uh just stay on for me so let's roll down i think that there's another little bit of touch right in this union so this is the start of the hulk box and you can see it right in there so somebody painted over this line right there and you can kind of see the damaged fiber uh, maybe right right across here um, but you know and it's unclear to me if that actually was a crease or if it was um, just a gap in the printing but you definitely can see you know there's a kind of a blue sheen through there and that line is definitely um, darker darker color and then right here is another one so this is about halfway down the, the box by Hulk's shoulder Kind of that blue bubble on the side, but definitely you can see, um, you know, a line there and a line there that has been color touched. So you get some odd reflections off the double layer of plastic going on through. But I was really happy with how uh, easy this could be to do. Um, and I think that was about it. And I can't remember now if I found another. Actually, oh, maybe it was right there. I think right there is another little speck. Uh, so that is right where the red, he's here, the world's first and greatest Canadian superhero. And right above there is that one little black speck uh, kind of centered right here. But below that point, I think it was clean, and I wanted to get to one of the dots along here, just to compare and contrast. Yeah, oh, maybe right there's some more. Yeah, right in that area. So this is either the chain or the bottom half of that Canadian superhero, uh, but you can see it quite clearly right there. Oh yeah, right here is where I wanted to talk about because that little speck there coming on off the edge is just a printing thing. Um, this is right below where the chains were. So this is the chain kind of busting off Wolverine. Um, this is a very common spot for a dot along that spine. And you can see there, it looks completely natural and filled into the background. Um, and it doesn't show any of that darker matter finish. So this has been um, pretty informative, I would say and I've really enjoyed using the microscope. So um, I'm gonna check with the client and make sure that they're okay with me taking this thing out of the holder and trying some color touch removal. So sit tight, I'll be right back. Ooh, here's one more little tick, I think. You can see right there. Let's see, where is this on the book? This is between Wolverine and the, the sky background, but right there, you know, we can very clearly see that spine tick and it has been colored through that spine tick, so. All right, we'll be back here in a sec. All right, here we are. It's time to get cracking. So I got my screwdriver handy. And as always, we're gonna start right up here along this top edge and just, uh, there we go. Bust a top post, bust a second top post. Just slide the flathead part of the screwdriver right down this edge. CGC label. We have an incredible Hulk 181 slid out. So this one has a nice big gap there across the top. And I know I'm not wearing gloves, but sometimes my hands get sweaty, and that is the case here. So give this thing two gentle taps down. We're just gonna open right across the top edge here. through scissors. 
give us a little bit more operating space. All right, now I can put my gloves on. Hopefully still has you know, microchamber paper. I'll just check for another piece of microchamber paper. I think they've gone to mostly only putting one in, but they used to have two for sure. So I think that's all okay. There we go. Well, this does have some odd ink through it now that I'm looking at it there. I don't think that that is uh, an interior cover. Yeah, look at that. All right, so here we are. Uh, I'm gonna clear out the board and then we'll come on back. All right, here we are back with this incredible Hulk number 181. Uh, according to my notes, we've identified seven pieces of color touch. So uh, seven or eight, depending on how you count them, but up there, uh, right there, right there, uh, right there, right there, right there, and then uh, down here. And so I think that that all in all is seven. Top edge, top of yellow, uh, above Incredible Hulk, second tick on yellow, top of Hulk bubble, by Hulk's elbow, above he's here, and then uh, on the chain. So I think that that was all of them. Uh, you'll notice one obvious tell for color touch is bleed through. And so that little dot right there, those two little small dots, that's what I caught originally. And uh, that's all I thought it was because while those dots did clearly bleed through, if we look really carefully down the interior spine, you know, I don't see other color touch where those spots are bleeding through. So the reason this was labeled by CGC as being C1 amateur restoration is because uh, of this little bit of bleed through. Now that little bit of bleed through also makes it a little bit easier for us to remove. And so uh, I'm actually going to attempt to remove that from the interior out. And to remove it, what I have here is a dental tool. Um, and this dental tool, uh, I got a whole set of these and they come with all kinds of goofy angles, but the one that I've decided I like the best is the one that is kind of teardrop shaped out. And it's because I like to be able to scrape this direction and I have a nice fine tip there. And so I'm gonna use a combination of a nice backer board here um, on both of the uh, the desk so I don't cut into that as well as to keep the book as you know away from the spine as possible. So I've got a little piece of backer board there and then uh, what I'm going to do here is just gently scrape the space off using my dental tool and just try to fleck that black ink off. Unfortunately because it bled all the way through there's no way for you to remove it without removing the paper. We're going to just try to be as small as possible and I'm going to try to deliberately take as little as possible and uh, risk sending it to CGC a second time and getting a second purple label instead of you know taking a chunk off to make sure I get it all right away. Uh, part of the reason for that is we're obviously lowering the grade of the comic book as I'm doing this and I want to lower it as little as possible um, as not to make you know a huge negative impact on the comic book overall. Ideally, we still want to improve the overall value of the book. Uh, for those of you that don't pay attention, typically a purple label will garner about 40 to 50% the value of a unrestored copy with rare exceptions for truly rare books. So. I think I have all of the tick off there. I think that there's just a little bit of dust hanging out. Um, and I'm gonna use my microscope off camera here. Unfortunately, uh, I do not have two uh, video recording devices. So it's impossible for you to be able to see both the microscope screen and me. So you'll have to be just a little patient. We'll go through the microscope uh, once once I'm done all the way here. And I can see just a little bit more of it on the front, on a little bit of that K. Unfortunately, I think this is one of the broader ticks that were out there. 
Put it on the comic. It's a real shame too because it's, you know, overall a very, very small amount of a comic book. on the inside now and I think that that ultimately is good might have taken a little bit more than it. oh and I did want to point out there's a little dab here on the splash page and so I'm gonna snag that too uh, just so that doesn't tip anybody off but there's a little bit of a dot and a little bit of bleed through from that splash page there and I think what's left It'll just look like a chip out of the old the old comic. Chip out of the old block, as it were, up there. Unfortunately, I have to take a second here to kind of zoom in on it. Yeah, I think that that looks good now. At least I don't see any of that. Uh, so then the next the next tick here was right above the yellow going on down. And these don't bleed through, so I think all I have to do here is just scratch just enough to knock that color out of the crease. Okay, well, I can still kind of see it on the bottom side there. So I'm gonna just And hopefully when I'm done, these will just look like slightly wider spine ticks, which would not be inappropriate for a book of this era and grade. So we're starting it out at an 8.5, which fortunately it looks like the little bit on the south side of this is just hanging in there with me. So a bunch of black fly off there real close, so hopefully that'll be good. Yeah, and now it definitely looks like just damaged fiber. So I think that looks okay. Let's see here, the next one down was, I think the smallest touch, and that was still in that yellow box but it was not the first dab, it was the second dab, yep. So it's not the bigger spot. Right here. And the other end of this is kind of the complementary angle. And so I'm gonna actually use that right here just to make that out. Good there. Just from that perspective. Okay, so then the next one I have here is on the top of the Hulk bubble, and I think unfortunately this was the biggest one. It was right up here. Because that was both through the black and blue section. as well as the spine.
right next to it was right here by the Hulk's elbow. both of these under the microscope now and we'll walk down the spine again on the microscope after we're done so i got most of it on that top tick there's a little bit more i think i want to take on the top of the two lines i drew and then on the bottom one it looks like I knocked it out. So I think that's good. All right, a little bit more on the top one. Next one I have here on is above he's here. Let me find the our Canadian superhero. And that is indeed a really small line right above there. Yep, it's not where the, the ends meet, it's above that point. And what I'm doing trying to do is find the original damage in the gloss so that I can identify it. That one was really small, so I hope that that really small little dab there was enough to do it. Bullseye. That hit it perfect. Uh, I'm just going to go one little, little stroke higher on the high side. I can still just see a little bit of discolored ink. There we go. And then the last one was on the chain. And I want to double check where that was at. And that looked like it was, it was kind of right underneath the first link there. Pretty close to the top, though. Let's see count dots really. I think it's in the second one. So that would be right here. Right, right there. Oops, having a hard time getting it on the microscope now. Yep, that hit it right on the nose. So uh, that's exactly what I wanted to do. A little bit, a little bit bigger, a little bit further in than I might like to have gone, but that's pretty much spot on. Now there's still a little bit of black along the spine, so I'm just gonna even that out so it looks more like a spine tick. All right, so let me see here. We did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think we got them all there. Um, all right, so let's uh, come on back under the microscope. 
All right, here we are back with this incredible copy of The Incredible Hulk number 181. So let's just start by taking a quick peek up here at this top corner. Um, and I have on my microscope uh, a series of Golden Age backer boards to try to add uh, a bunch of support to it. So the area here had, you know, kind of a broad V of color touch. And um, you can see there, we pretty much had to take that chunk of paper off because it had bleed through. Uh, and I think that that now will go without notice. So, you know, this I think looks like just kind of a same ink as what we had before uh, in the fibers. Uh, certainly it doesn't look, you know, that much different than some of the damaged, you know, just edge look and, uh, and along here as well. So I think uh, that now is okay. We go to the spine here. I want to make sure I don't catch it on the metal tongs that were on the, the on the microscope. So I've kind of got it lifted up off of that, which is going to be kind of a goofy, goofy edge, but that's why we're going to have to keep refocusing here. It's harder to do through the uh, through the camera. So right here was our second little bit of touch and you can clearly see where we've uh, kind of gone through now this unfortunately was the only one where we went all the way through the paper other than that other top corner so i looked from the inside and you can kind of see the uh, splash page has a slightly different hue than the paper there but i think we've cleared that out um, this was the second one and certainly that does not look filled in anymore it's very clearly and deliberately kind of rubbed through and even though these look like gigantic holes because they're, you know, magnified, they're not that big. Now, this next one here is the biggest one, uh, and that's partially because it was kind of an odd V-shape. And um, this one looks like it goes because it was, you know, up through here, and I think it was also down over there. And so we missed the mark a little bit here because I think the paper right here probably did not need to actually be removed. I think we just needed to remove some there and some from here. And so we kind of missed that one a little bit. Uh, a little bit difficult with the dexterity and that tool is a little bit unpredictable. Um, this is the next one. Uh, that one I think we got as well, um, right by the Hulk's elbow. Don't, don't need to spend too much time now. It looks, you know, again, like damaged paper, but you can see where we pulled fiber out from there. Um, and again, that looks quite large in person. It just looks like a normal spine tick, I would say. So then if we keep going, this one I think was the tightest job we had. And I think that that one worked exactly kind of how you wanted it to. Um, very, very small, very light damage to the paper. Very clear um, right there as well. So those were both quite, quite tight. And I'm gonna take a Q-tip when I'm done with this and just gently roll a moist Q-tip in this area just to try to clear out some of that loose fiber. I haven't done that yet. Uh, I thought about using an air horn or a air, can of air, but I think that's too much force. So I'm going to go with a damp Q-tip to do that. Um, right there is another really small one. So this is the section right above the Canadian superhero that we kind of had called out. And then right here coming on up is the chain, which was the, the most northern one. And so we've kind of cleared that out as well. So I think all in all, we have uh, removed seven little dabs of color touch here with our dental tool. And if we look at the comic book, from arm's length, I'm just gonna slide the camera out of here. Um, but you know, from arm's length, it's kind of hard to see it. If you zoom in on it, you can definitely see the little chip that we've now knocked out of there. And then, you know, these look kind of just like spine ticks going on down. This is, I think is the worst damage to the eye appeal of the book. And that's where we had that big kind of Ving. Um, these you barely even notice, uh, you know, that one's a little bit bigger, but you know, without, you know, having your attention drawn to it too much. I think that that was a pretty decent shot there for a book that had more than uh, a single little bit of color touch. So I'm gonna give this one a press and we're gonna send it back to the client to send back to CGC and hopefully it'll all turn out okay. All right, folks, little update on the color uh, touch removal here on this Incredible Hulk number 180. CGC still gave this a uh, restored grade and they said they still found color touch in the same spots so I'm gonna go ahead and take the microscope and reinvestigate that area up here as well as along the spine and just make sure I didn't miss anything in this area or further down the spine where we know we found it um, those are the two areas they flagged and 
you know, we'll just have to take another look. One of the balances here with color touch removal, of course, is you don't want to take more than you have to out of the book, but at the same time, you need to remove all of it because all they need to do is find one molecule of uh, inappropriate ink and then they can call it color touch. So you, unfortunately, it has to be a very complete removal and we'll have to see what that looks like here under the microscope. So I'm going to do some of that off camera because it's going to be quite pokey and manipulating it isn't really the best, but we'll see what it comes up. All right, I spent a good amount of time under the microscope with this issue and I did not find any new areas of color touch that I missed the first time. Uh, what I did see is maybe a little bit of that bluish hue from the color touched ink on the borders. And so uh, I very carefully went through and just expanded all of the areas of color touch, um, kind of removal up there and down along here. Um, yeah, so we can kind of see it. The, these were a little bit finer areas and I've just kind of expanded them. Um, this one I'm pretty sure was a printing defect, or maybe it was that one, uh, where you get that um, horizontal line across the spine. That's present on a lot of these copies, and it is not color touch, as I showed in the mic uh, yeah, in the microscope. But I was wondering if CGC was confusing it, so I knocked that one out, figuring one more amongst the series wasn't that big of a deal, um, just to be on the safe side. So hopefully this one will get a blue label on round, I guess, ultimately round three to CGC. Um, but if this is not the right areas of color touch, I think we're going to have to email CCS and see what uh, they're looking at, because I frankly don't see a whole lot. Um, so that's where I'm at with this one. So uh, stay tuned, keep your fingers crossed for me, and Excelsior. All right, folks, CGC has rendered a second verdict on this copy of the Incredible Hulk number 181 that had color touch, and they have deemed it now a universal blue label. Uh, and so you can see that zooming on in here. So this is the issue that started as an 8.5. You know, that 8.5 was after my best work, kind of figuring it had color touch. I think the owner was hoping I was wrong about what I was seeing on the corner. Uh, you know, and I only saw the, the little bit on the corner up over here. I, I missed the stuff on the spine. Uh, then, you know, after tr at first attempt at trying to remove the color touch, I think we got probably 95% of it, but CGC still flagged it as restored with slight color touch. And so, uh, you know, I took a second look at it. We expanded the, the removal areas a little bit down a number of these spots on the spine. And of course, when we did that, we dealt a little bit more damage to the book. But regardless, this one now has achieved the universal grade. And that looks like it cost us a 1.0 on the, the grade, which of course is unfortunate. But it's particularly with the bleed through, there's no way to remove the color touch without fully removing that paper. Um, which is really unfortunate. And of course, this one had a number of touches down the spine, which are now all small holes in the book. Thankfully, the total surface area of the color touch was quite small. So again, I mean, that chip in the corner up there, you really have to look for to be able to see. Uh, and the dots on the spine overall are quite noticeable. So, you know, they're not really noticeable from arm's length. If you zoom it out, you kind of have to really zoom on in to see it. So this one, I think, ended up overall quite nicely. You know, restored books are kind of a taboo to many collectors, and often they fetch as little as 40% uh, of the fair market value of their respective universal grades. Often they're about 40 to 50%. People are a little bit more tolerant with the golden age books that are very rare to get in any grade uh, but for books like an incredible hulk number 181 that is uh, relatively common being from you know the mid 1970s collectors are going to be a little bit more particular often and you'd probably be looking at about 40 percent fair market value uh, and so going from an 8.5 restored you know all the way up to a 7.5 blue label, I think is still a pretty big enhancement in the fair market value of that book. And so this one was a lot of fun. You know, it did take two attempts, which is unfortunate, but I think overall, you know, it was well worth the effort to put in. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Um, this one I might actually upload as a two-parter because it's quite long, but go ahead and leave a thumbs up here for the video. Click that subscribe button down below. Please reach out on Facebook or Instagram. You know, always happy to chat comic books and make sure you keep on collecting True Believer.